Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Juma mubarak to you all. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. In Ahmaduhu and Astainahu and Astaufiru. When I would be lahim in Shuruli and Fusna, men say Ate Amalina, Maya de Hilla, who fell out with the Lala, or may you lil who fell out the Ella. Why should we la ilaha illa law, the Hula Shrikala? Why should we end the Mohammedan Abdu or Sulu, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? All prayer is, is due to Allah, from whom we seek help and forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from those of our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray. Whomsoever Allah leads astray, no one can guide. And bear witness that there is no God except Allah, the one who has no par partner. And we bear witness that uh, the Prophet Muhammad is Allah's true servant and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. Allah tells us in the Quran, يَا أَيُّهُ الَّذِينَ عَمْنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ حَقَّ تُقَاتِهِ وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ O ye who believe, be mindful of Allah, be mindful of Allah in the way that Allah deserves, and do not die except in a state of full submission to Allah. رَبِّ شْرَحْ لِي صَدْرِي وَيَسِلْ لِي أَمْرِي وَحْلُ الْبَقْتَةَ مِنْ لِسَانِي يَفْقَوْ قَوْلِي سُبْحَانَكَ لَا إِلْمَ لَنَا إِلَّا مَا عَلَمْتَنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ I pray that may Allah open my chest, make easy for me this task, and loosen the knots in my tongue that these words may be understood. And uh, glory be to you, Allah, glory be to you alone, that we have no knowledge except that which you have taught us. Verily, it is you who is the all-knowing, the all wise Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Again, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A blessed Juma to you all uh, on this day uh, during the sacred month of the Hijjah and the uh, you know sacred time uh, of the Islamic calendar, uh, but also just on the uh, on the precipice of uh, Eid al-Adha, um, and also uh, just on the uh, precipice as well of the day of Arafah. So there's a uh, very sacred and very blessed time um, that you know, we find ourselves in the midst of, uh, but we also can't help but maybe think about amidst a time of celebration as Eid is, a, you know, a time of joy, a time of celebration, um, a time for reflection and, then, uh, you know, in, in community and so many of these positive things that we can't help but think about the world that we are in is also one that is a, uh, a one that is maybe not so much being celebrating celebrating about uh there's not uh much to give us a cause to celebrate celebrate um given so many different things happening around the world and uh even within our own communities here and so uh it it, it does come in a way that uh is tempered but we, we we still nevertheless go into this time the sacred time uh thinking about what does it look like to maintain or to keep or to cultivate and to build hope uh, in a time where it feels things are still hopeless or to be able to rejoice, to be able to celebrate in a time that feels like it's not uh, it, it's not appropriate to rejoice or not appropriate to celebrate or there may not feel like anything to celebrate. And one thing that I, I, I think that uh, that's come across that is, you know, helps for me to just think about what this what does this look like uh, finding kind of hope in hopelessness or in times of hopelessness. There was a movie that came out, you know, a while back, maybe now over over about almost a decade ago. Um, uh, hopefully not that long, but uh, there's a, 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 a I'm a big superhero fan, and uh, you know, there's uh, this movie on the X Men um, that was called X Men: Days of Future Past, and you know, I'm not going to go into the whole logistics of everything, but you know, if you're if you're a big superhero fan, or even if you're not uh, a fan of superheroes or X Men or whatnot, um, you know, you may be somewhat privy to uh, the the X Men and and this particular movie does a very interesting job of you know putting together the X Men of old and the X Men of new and creating a story that involves the you know the uh, crossover in between with their respective storylines. But there's a particular instance in that movie that that sticks out to me. Um, and it's a conversation between uh, Professor X or Charles Xavier's you know kind of the uh, lead. Uh, you know, the 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 leader of the X-Men um, is kind of, you know, uh, at the head in, in this space uh, between his older self, his future self and his younger self. And his younger self is somebody who has, um, you know, been uh, gone through, you know, so much, but has kind of lost hope as somebody that has become overwhelmed uh, that uh, because he's not, um, you know, been able to, uh, has had all these other things kind of going on in life, but essentially, 
you know, Charles Xavier, his, his superpower is to be able to be a telepath. He can read people's minds. Um, he can, you know, feel what they feel. He can, uh, you know, be able to deeply connect with them, but he has a, a very strong superpower and uh, his superpower is amplified by uh, this, uh, this tool that has been designed um, that's or this system called Cerebro, which allows him to, you know, when he puts this helmet on or he connects into this computer of sorts, he's able to do that, not just with one person, but he can do that with every person on the planet. Um, and it becomes very overwhelming for him to do in that sense, or to, to be that connected. But in order to, you know, save the world and do all these different things, um, to find the troubles, to do all this stuff, uh, he has to kind of have this, this outlet to stay connected, but it becomes very overwhelming from him. And, uh, you know, this is uh, this is kind of a, a little dialogue that that they're having when when they have an instance in this movie where uh, the former the old future person or the future person is coming with the person of the past and they're reconnecting uh, in this sense and uh, the older version um, the future version tells Charles that you know sometimes we all we all need a little help he sees that he's overwhelmed and the younger Charles says that. I'm not the man I once was, that I opened my mind up and it, it almost overwhelms me that when I try to help these people, when I try to get connected, um, when I go into this tool, I become overwhelmed. Uh, and, you know, it says that all those voices, all these people, it's so much pain. And uh, Professor X reminds him that it's not their pain that he's afraid of, it's his own pain. Um, and that as frightening as it can be, the pain will actually help make him stronger, that if he allows himself to feel it, if he allows himself to embrace it, it will make him more powerful than he would ever imagine. And for him, he says that it's the greatest gift that we have, speaking to him directly, that regarding his power as a telepath, as a power to not to read minds, but to feel and to connect, that to bear their pain without breaking. Um, but it comes from the most human part of them, which is hope. And he tells him before they conclude their conversation, because this dystopian future is about to end. Um, and so they go into the past and they're trying to change the past, which is where this uh, younger version of him comes from. And he says that we need you to hope again. Otherwise, this future is going to come about. This, this future that is hopeless, this future that is devoid of hope, this future that is about to uh, end in a way. Um, we need you to hope again. And I think about in the in the space that we're at right now, um, thinking about that when we think we don't, we, we may not have the superpowers that the X Men have or any superhero has. But when we think about ourselves, whether as Muslims or as anybody else, that in this day and age we have a superpower of being able, like unlike anybody else in the past, to be able to be connected to people across the world in so many different spaces. And we might not have Cerebro. That is the thing to put on our head and to give us connection there. But we have our social media. We have our devices. We have these things that plug us in and allow us to at least get a gauge into so many people's lives and, so, and see the world through so many different lenses. And thinking about that for how, how many of us has it, do we share that sentiment that the younger Charles shared, that there's all these people, there's so much pain. We look at the images and scenes from Gaza and you see so many different images and things that are infuriating, things that are just deteriorating and you know just just absolutely just heartbreaking. Um, and and there's just so much that you're you're seeing there, and it overwhelms you, and it overwhelms you. But uh, what the older Charles reminds is that it's not their pain that you're afraid of; it's yours. But knowing that being able to better connect with people, being able to better uh, be able to you know be in that space to hold you know, and acknowledge that pain, but not break under it is, is, is the greatest gift, but it comes from having the aspect of hope, having this aspect there. So we may see all these stories, we may become overwhelmed, and it may send us into a space where we completely disconnect from it. We just deny what's happening, the atrocities that are there and feel like we can't do anything. So we're just going to take a step back and take a step away from all of this. Um, but what the older professor reminds us is that Hope does not just exist uh, in, in a vacuum. Hope is, is that which exists within spaces of helplessness and hopelessness. Uh, and, and it exists in a space that allows us to want to do something, to make a change. Because if we stop hoping, if we stop having that element there, 
it's not just the present that suffers. It's also the future. Um, and think about those who might come after us who had wished that we hadn't stopped hoping, those who would wish we had not uh, given up in a way. That uh, in the Bible, it says that, you know, uh, faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the belief for the conviction of things not seen. Faith being the assurance of things hoped for, that we hope to have, uh, you know, be, uh, ha have, have uh, at the end of at the end of our lives, at the end of this world, to be reunited with our maker, that faith assures us of these things. And the Quran tells us in, in Surah Al-Imran that don't lose hope and don't, don't, don't be grieved, don't be sad, that you surely will be victorious if you are true in your faith. Now, that doesn't mean you won't take losses in the worldly life. That doesn't mean things will not get difficult. We see the model and example of our Prophet Sallallahu who suffered physical um, emotional and and so many different kinds of holistic losses in his life, um, the loss of loved ones, the loss of property, the loss of all of these different things, the loss of his home, so many different things. But to continue to remind him and the people who also shared this experience that don't lose hope, don't be don't be demoralized, don't 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 give up on hope because you surely will be victorious if you are true in faith. And there's an interesting connection that if you are sincere in your faith, you you can't lose. Um, and as as we just read from that the biblical scripture of faith being the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. That having a sincerity in faith does in and of itself the work for us. That having that belief um, is 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 key, uh, and it's fueled by uh, keeping the hope. Because if we if we remain hopeful. We remain, uh, you know, giving this fuel that 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 Charles Xavier told his younger self that you know the power that we have is a strong gift. We have a strong gift to be able to connect with so many people and to feel and to uh, hold that pain and uh, to be able to do the job that we need to do to help them. But it comes from hope and thinking about for us, you know, with, with respect to our faith, it may. Uh, it, it, it may feel like it's it's weighing here, it's swaying there, but what does it look like for us to actually properly place that hope while still not feeling like we're being delusional? Faith, that hope does not necessarily mean we're just going to be completely delusional. Hope is also us recognizing in this in a space that might be hopeless, in a space that uh, may feel like there's nothing uh, you know good that might come of this. It may be feel very bleak. What is there to hope for? What is there to kind of keep us going? That hope is an acknowledgement of our circumstances. It's an acknowledgement of our trials and tribulations and of the challenges of the realities that are there. But to hope is to be able to have uh, that, that, that grounding within the here and now, but understanding that it has those future repercussions. That why does Allah tell us that to not lose hope or to not feel sad? That hope directly helps fuel our faith in a sense. Allah tells us in the Quran as well in Surah Rad that he shows us the lightning as a fear and some commentators say for travelers and he shows it as a hope for those who may wait for the rain. Um, and it is Allah who brings up the clouds heavy with water, um, thinking about that these signs that Allah shows us, um, whether in uh, the form of natural phenomenon or in the form of other circumstances that come, other challenges that we face in our own lives or as a community, that we're shown these things for a reason, we're shown these things for a purpose, that uh, in one element there is a fear, uh, there is something that gives us a cause for waking up and saying that we need to get, get stuff together, we need to get our act together, uh, we need to not get too comfortable. Um, growth occurs outside of our comfort zones, that we need to be able to get ready uh, when, when, when uh, we see any of these things, but it also serves as a hope for something uh, the positive end of things that come about, that there's there's positivity that comes from uh, being able to recognize in this sign what is kind of going on. So uh, Allah reminds us uh, to, to, to see these signs, even if they're in nature or whatever they might be, and to be able to be aware of what is uh, maybe something as a cause for um, us to wake up, but also for us to find some hope in find some, uh, find some, uh, you know, aspiration with respect to cultivating our faith, that there's something that gives us hope to mobilize. Uh, Allah tells us in Surah Al-Imran that do not lose heart or don't fall into despair, but you will triumph 
if you are believers. And Allah tells us too, again, like our community, our people, our predecessors, that we're not just all experiencing the most peaceful, lavish life, but people who lived in hardship, who lived in difficulty. But what does triumph mean? What does it mean to be victorious? What does it mean? What are these elements that we might associate uh, a win-loss column to, or we might see as black and white? What does it mean to triumph in the language of the Quran? And what does it mean to triumph from the lens of the divine? That there's not a material sense in which that can be quantified. Uh, but we think about it in the hereafter. We think about uh, what is the true victory? What is the what is the true loss? Um, that when we see that uh, Adam and Hawa um, or Adam and Eve, when they're cast out, they, they lifted up a prayer that don't make us amongst those who are the losers, who have lost, um, and not just lost one, but who have lost out on uh, this gift of being connected with you, to being connected with the divine. Um, and to what does it mean that you will triumph if you are believers, if you are true in your belief, if you are sincere in your faith, if you're cultivated and you're strong in your hope and your belief, that you won't lose, that have have hope with respect to Allah, have uh, have hope in uh, in Allah's uh, you know presence, in Allah's uh, saving, in Allah's just grace that is there. That have maintain hope in that, um, and you'll triumph if you keep that belief, if you keep that sincerity and belief. And thinking for our purposes, just as we uh, begin to close out, inshallah, what does it mean for us in a time like this to keep hope amongst hopelessness? I was listening to a TED talk in which a mother who had uh, a uh, a daughter that was diagnosed with a um it was diagnosed with a uh, a, a a sort of like a, a, a disease that uh, was going to be fatal going to be terminal um uh, during childhood and was not going to allow her to live uh, maybe even into high school or past there it's going to debilitate it's going to uh, you know take away so many of her basic functions and being able to uh, take away much of the way in which she like, lives life. She spoke about how in this space where it was just continuous, uh, you know, one thing after another that was being lost, um, you know, first, you know, it was, it was having to deal with the shock that we're going to lose our daughter within, uh, you know, not even two decades or so where we're not going to see, be able to see her throughout uh, the, the growth of life's process. But after that, you know, losing mobility, losing eyesight, losing basic functions, losing basic speech, all of these different things that came. And she lifted up how still in this in this space, her daughter was giving her hope, even if she was in a very, uh, you know, a, a largely immobile state, but she would still be able to go take them, take her to different places, um, go to a school, go to a different place. But her daughter gave her that hope that just being there, just being the present, it allowed her to uh, take a step back from worrying about what is going to come, what's the inevitable things that are going to happen in the future, what are some of the things that are happening there. It's going to uh, allow her to take a step back from what could have been done different, what could have been done uh, differently from the past, and stay focused on what is here in the present, because that's what's going to affect their future going forward. That's going to affect everything, but they don't know what's guaranteed tomorrow. They don't know when their daughter might be there tomorrow or not. Um, and it gives them even more presence to ground here and now in the future and in, in the present um, and to, to, to be to take stock of that moment, to be hopeful of this moment that is there. But what can we do with this day? What can we do in a hopeless situation, in a hopeless diagnosis to find hope in this, to find that joy, to find those things that give us meaning um, and to build off from there? And so thinking about for us that as we. Uh, go through our life, whether connected in different ways, but we're, we're probably living our life in a way that we are, you know, connected to so many different things. We are uh, plugged into the world around us. We're plugged into so many different things. And it gives us a lot of despair. It gives us a lot of things that we feel like we can't bear, we can't take on. How can we uh, think about uh, that our duty as Muslims to not just be connected to those who are all around us, but to be in an active form where we're praying for them, where we're doing things of positive uh, regard for them, that we're doing things of uh, positive tra transformation and change for them. How do we kind of keep that energy going? And just like Charles Xavier, the, the senior, had told his younger um, self that we need you to hope again. Why do we need you to hope? Because your your faith will come from that. Your your faith will cultivate in a sense, and 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 your faith will keep you grounded in that moment. But it's going to affect so much that you don't see right now. But when you hope again, 
you are going to be able to transform things, not just for yourself, but you're going to be able to change it for those who come after you. Um, and, and think about what does it mean for us to find hope? Hope is not a delusion. It's not something that is irrational, but to be hopeful in a time of hopelessness gives that kind of a spark that brought about this very uh, this very dean. Um, to be hopeful in a time of hopelessness uh, is, is something that brings about uh, the most positive types of changes that we've seen in human history uh, amidst all the adversity. Amidst, you know, Islam was not a popular movement. Islam started as going against the grain, but to maintain that hope, and we see the changes that come about with it. And uh, to think about, we're on the precipice of, again, with the Hijjah, we're on the precipice of, uh, of Eid al-Adha, um, of the day of Arafah, uh, especially that being right here. It's a time for us to think about what, uh, or, or renew that hope that we have in Allah, renew that hope that is there for us. Um, and the day of Arafah is a time for us to, uh, you know, not just have that opportunity of a reset for spiritual cleansing and for renewal, but it's also a day for reflection, for introspection, for repentance, but a day for us to find that hope again, but a day for us to not feel that our hope is disconnected from the hopelessness, that in the hopelessness, we try and find what do we, what gives us hope, what keeps us hopeful because that is going to continue to uh, fuel the engine of our faith. And when our faith is cultivated, we're firm in our belief, as Allah tells us, we will be triumphant, we'll be victorious. So as we go into the day of Arafah, as we go into uh, Eid al-Adha, as we go forward, we remember um, how do we find, and we try and uh, amidst, amidst all the, the negativity and the hopelessness in acknowledging the difficulty, what still gives us hope? What do we find hope? And that we must remember that we can't lose hope. Um, that we find hope even in the things that feel like they are the most hopeless situations, um, that when we lose that hope, we lose so much more than just uh, one tangible thing. We, we lose things not just in the moment, but in the time to come. So if we keep that hope, finding the things that we are hopeful in, it doesn't have to be something grand, but it can be something that is very tangible, is very small and minute, and, and minute but just the little, little wins, little, little victories uh, but they have tremendous impacts for us in the future. So as we go into the day of Arafah, uh, a day that uh, our Prophet says, if we fast on that day, it will expiate the sins of our past year and coming year, um, that we uh, seek this prayer of renewal, seek this prayer of finding that hope, that if Allah has, uh, is, is, is feeling distant from us, we're feeling disconnected, that our prayer be about finding that hope. So may Allah make this a day, uh, not just of commemorating sacrifice, but a day in which our sacrifices give us a chance to hope again. Um, and so that we may be a source of hope uh, for those who are living in, in days and lives without true hope and to be able to restore that hope for other people. Uh, and may Allah enable that to be so. I wish you all a blessed Eid Mubarak uh, in advance uh, and praying that you and your families have uh, a uh, blessed day, but also a time where we can all as a com individually, as well as a community, Find a way to hope again, inshallah. Amin wa akhir wa da'wana. Inni alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.